Oh, it's so cute how Americans spell defense with an S. <laughs> And Kevin, otherwise known as Form BX257, here to bring you another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. And today I'll be taking a look at the G.I. Joe Battle Station playset, the 1985 Air Defense. Now, the Air Defense doesn't make any comic book or cartoon appearances. It's based on a real life weapon system, which I'll talk about a bit later. So I can kind of understand it not being seen in the cartoon. But there's really no excuse for it not being seen in the comic book because, quite frankly, there was a lot of uh, real life stuff in the comic book and it could have been fairly used fairly often in there. Now, even though this is a 1985 item and it was re released in 1986, uh, in 1990 to 91, it was actually available as a mail away through Hasbro Direct. But it was only available in a three pack with its other uh, 1985 wave mates the Cobra Bunker, and the G.I. Joe Checkpoint. Although billed as a small battle station playset, the Air Defense is actually a rather large accessory weapon system. Here's a three and three quarter inch figure just to give you a sense of how big this thing actually is. The Air Defense comes with the following features. The ability to rotate its turret on its base, 360 degrees. The hard points, which have the missiles and the large radar dish, can rotate up about so much, almost straight up, and quite a bit downwards as well. It's only being stopped by the um, radar dish hitting the turret. Now, the missiles themselves are both removable, you only get two, but they're really large missiles. Without its rather large radar dish attached, the air defense is a dead ringer for the US Navy's Convair Terrier Twin Missile Launch System. Even the air defense's missiles are a dead ringer for the original RAM-2 Terrier missiles. But that's a rather odd thing because at the time of the air defense manufacturer in 1985, the Navy had long since moved on and made RAM-67 missiles for their Terrier launchers. Now, the RAM-67 missiles have a very distinctive long fin going down the shaft. And if that sounds familiar, that is a perfect description of the missiles that went with the 1985 USS Flag. It's actually rather a shame that the two missiles aren't interchangeable, so you can have an upgraded air defense set. You'll notice that I have the Action Force version, which meant that uh, my toy was released in the UK and in Europe, but there weren't any differences in the color or the plastic quality uh, between this and what was released in North America. Here's one of the mail order booklets where you could order the three pack of the small play sets. Uh, 1175 for all three. Those were the days. At the time of its release in 1985, the Air Defense had the largest missiles of any G.I. Joe um, vehicle or playset. Here's the second largest, the 1982 and 1983 MMS. And you can clearly see that the Air Defense missiles are just slightly longer than the MMS missiles. If you're looking for one on the aftermarket, you don't have to worry about any parts breaking or little parts being lost because this thing is actually rather sturdy and there's not a lot to it. Even the little fins on the uh, missiles are fairly sturdy. One thing you, you do have to uh, worry about is probably the large radar dish uh, either not being with the set or being very easy to knock off, which I always have a problem with. Now, I always used to think that that was a design flaw. Now, as you can see, the uh, this loop here, 
that's where this thing goes in sort of like um, hitching something on your belt buckle it just sort of goes in and is supposed to hold on there through gravity alone it, it's not friction fit or pegged in there I always used to think that was a massive design flaw but then I later learned that was actually supposed to be a feature which was never advertised and never sort of followed up on by Hasbro. You see, the air defense was always meant to be sold with the Cobra Bunker as a sort of a versus set. And while the air defense uh, sort of lost the intent written on its box and the um, instruction sheet, the Cobra Bunker's instruction sheet still retains that where you see the blast apart feature and look what example they use as a missile which initiates the blast apart feature yeah that's right that's the air defense missile so what was missing on the air defense uh, instruction sheet is a diagram of the Cobra bunkers missile hitting the air defense and popping off the radar dish. The radar dish is meant to be popped off as a sign of damage. One of the biggest problems I have with the air defense as a standalone playset is that it's kind of simple. All it is is a turret which can move like any other turret on any other vehicle or playset. It has two missiles and that's it. It doesn't have any interactivity with the action figures, which are the driving force of the G.I. Joe toy series. So, what you're paying your $5 for, as opposed to uh, $3 for the 1983 Pack Rat, or the $4 for 1984 Missile Defense Unit, you're paying for this giant size, which I'll admit is maybe enough for most people. And it is certainly imposing. But that's really all you're getting, and it's kind of strange because here we have a very playable little uh, weapon system, a very playable little playset, and yet one year later we get we have to shell out more money for something which kind of isn't a, isn't as playable, and that's kind of strange that the design evolution went that way. Long-time viewers of my YouTube channel will probably remember the Air Defense as my pick for the number one worst toy in my 1982 to 1985 range of my collection. Now you're probably wondering, well, if I didn't like it so much, why don't I just get rid of it? Well, the fact of the matter is, is I'm a completist, and two, it does have a place in my collection. Now, as you can see, I've placed the Air Defense with the 1983 G.I. Joe Headquarters Command Center. Now, besides the fact that the air defense is, well, gray, a flat gray, and the air def the, uh, headquarters is actually more of a silver tone, it is actually within the same sort of uh, hue range. So it actually does fit in, well, at least to the eye. Another thing is that the 1983 Headquarters has not very many features on the outside of its base. By adding the air defense, you're actually adding a bit of interactivity outside and away from the base, which I think is quite nice. And as you can see, the base is quite monochromatic, really. So, the air defense adds a bit of pop with its bright red missiles. This thing was perfect for the 1983 headquarters. As for the interactivity of the air defense with action figures, believe it or not, I've solved that problem too. Enter the 1986 mainframe action figure accessory computer. Now, this is a fairly common thing to find on the aftermarket in junk lots, so you should be able to find one without the action figure if you so choose. Or if you want to get multiples of these, Again, that's a fairly easy thing to do. So, how does this thing interact with this? And this thing just rests right on top here. And while it doesn't plug in solidly, it rests very evenly and looks like it's a part of the item. And then you can have 
figures either typing into the keyboard on this computer or have it as a separate um, item, kind of like the president's briefcase, where you have to put this thing on here to activate it with a special code. I'll be taking a look at the small PlayStation. PlayStation? One of the biggest problems. Well, that's all the time I have right now. Please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind the scenes photos for these reviews. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then.